Napoleon is a historical figure that causes maximum controversy. For some, he is a tyrant who unleashed the Napoleonic Wars and claimed the lives of life. For others, he represents a visionary who sought to recruit people from among the slaves and create a European arrest union before his time. Which side of this debate are you on? Leave your comments, and we will try to imagine what an alternative reality would be like if it won. The consequence of a stop on this journey would naturally be the Battle of Waterloo, a pronounced defeat that appears at the end of Bonaparte's career and has become a phrase for a century to come. On June 18, 1815, from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., the army of the 7th Anti-Napoleonic Coalition in the French Empire fought on the territory of modern Estonia under pressure from Bonaparte. The battle ended in total defeat and the flight of Napoleon's troops, and the traditional alternate reality story begins with Waterloo. Napoleon won there. Yes, easy. Usually, when describing the composition, they are reminded that Bonaparte returned to power in France only three months before Waterloo, and his defeat in the battle was a foregone conclusion. In fact, in such a short time, Napoleon gathered under arms one and a half hundred combatant soldiers and heroes. The losses of allies and judges in the battle were almost decisive, and frankly, not very large scale, less than in the Battle of Borodino against Russia. It's a shock that the reflection was more of a tactical defeat. So, in 1812, Napoleon decided to make a decision with Russia, hoping to conquer her and expand his states on the continent. However, in the alternate reality, he makes a different decision. He is aware that the war with Russia may drag on and become a victim of loss for the French army. Instead of directing his forces to the east, he decided to focus on his main enemy Britain. He realizes that the blockade of Britain by sea is not producing the desired results, so he discovers new customers. The convention decides to use its controlling power in Europe to impose an economic blockade of Britain by land. He makes deals with other European countries to cover economic interaction with Britain. The French army, united by the Allies, begins a large-scale work on the transfer of Britain. They block its trade routes, restrict imports and exports, and are strictly justified for the British economy. At the same time, Napoleon was actively developing French shipbuilding and science in order to achieve superiority in naval power. He invests in technological innovation and upgrades the fleet to face British maritime dominance. Over time, the blockade begins to affect the British economy. Britain emerges with serious supply and export problems, leading to an economic downturn and straining the country. As a result, Britain is forced to reconsider its interrogator and seek a settlement with Napoleon. Both sides are aware that the continuation of the conflict will only exacerbate their problems, and they begin negotiations. One of the main reasons for Napoleon's invasion was his insistence on using the conditions of the Tilsit Peace. It could be said that it was possible without a war, but in fact, nothing could be said. In the novel War and Peace in French, the elite of the Russian Empire of the 19th century spoke this language, while half of the text was in English, and the French influence in the country was very important. During the invasion, serious situations arose when the negotiators from Napoleon's side in English, Russian and French, although Bonaparte established relatively friendly relations with gentleness, unlike England, there were still many other factors. However, in an alternative reality, one could start with the fact that a consistent appeal to the Council advises to comply with the terms of the Tilsit Peace. This was different from real history, where the dominance of the French language continued and became even stronger in Europe, in Spain and Prussia. Uprisings still happened with enviable frequency. It was not the destruction of half a million elite soldiers in Russia, which gave him the opportunity to maintain order. If the next few years had passed, perhaps there would have been a single German nation friendly to France. The third difference was that Napoleon assumed the importance of Europe in his ideology, despite the fact that he competed with Britain for a colony. 
The sale of Louisiana in 1803 was a striking record of this. Napoleon concentrated on his continent so as not to disperse forces. However, Britain, on the contrary, took over the colony and controlled most of Europe. In a world where Napoleon won, the British Empire would become even more powerful and defeat France with a united Europe would be unrealistic. Britain also has great potential and needs to find new uses for it. Who knows, perhaps the war between the USA and England in 1812 developed differently and independence, all these changes were undoubtedly recorded by the World War. But it is important to note that Napoleon's death from cancer in 1821 on the island of Saint on the other hand, territories, contradictions on the continent, including Spain and Prussia, fought for their independence. In a world where Napoleon won, the world would have been less advanced, and the events taking place at the Congress of Vienna in 1815 happened later. The USA, which has made a great contribution to the world's inventions, has come under arrest in relation to Canada, which the British continue to hold.